Lozan with another episode of Inside Pianos. Perhaps you've come to this video because you're realizing just how hard it is to record piano, especially if you're going for a classical sound. The task is easier if you're in a recital hall with a beautiful acoustic, but less so when you're in a studio or perhaps in a room of a house. So that's what this video is about, getting a really natural classical sound from the piano when you're recording in a relatively small space. So we'll hop into the studio in just a sec, but first I'd like to describe what I view to be the two main challenges of recording piano. The first I'll call the elephant problem. The second is the challenge of balancing immediacy versus ambience. So starting with the elephant problem. Perhaps you remember the Buddhist fable about the blind men who discover an elephant for the first time. They each go up to touch the elephant, but because they only touch one specific part, they have an incomplete picture, and later come to blows arguing about what an elephant actually is. I mean, I guess this fable functions pretty well as a metaphor for social discourse, but mainly, and I'm sure this is what the authors had in mind, it brilliantly captures the challenges of recording a classical piano. The piano has a huge surface area, most of which does actually contribute to the sound that we love. Even with two mics, it's possible to get an incomplete picture. So that's the elephant problem. The other challenge, which is kind of related, is trying to balance between ambience and immediacy when recording the piano. Uh, the best recordings make you feel like you're close to the instrument. You feel its warmth, you hear the attack of the hammers, but you also get the bloom of the sound. You hear the piano sound interacting with the hall around you. The way I and others address these two challenges is by having multiple mics, proximate mics, mics that are actually inside the case of the piano, as well as room mics. Uh, and when recording in a studio or in a room, reverb can be really helpful if used wisely. So let's go to the studio and I'll show you my setup. So let's talk about these proximate mics. I've tried condenser mics, both large and small diaphragm. I've tried dynamic mics, and I've arrived at a preference for ribbon mics. These are a stereo pair of Nuvo N8s put out by AEA. And there's something about ribbon mics that's very pleasing even at close proximity. Uh, it doesn't have the harshness that I've experienced with those other types of mics. It seems to somehow know how to filter out the sounds that you don't want, which are sometimes called transients, and seek out the musical sounds. Uh, also, they are, I wouldn't call them undetailed, but they're not overly detailed, which is, which is also a good thing. Because again, we're trying to mimic being in a hall, and you, there are things that you would hear up close to a piano that would not reach you as an audience member in, say, the 12th row or so. So in placing the mics, I try to think about how the piano amplifies the sound energy that's in the strings. It does so by fastening that energy to the soundboard via this bridge here that travels through the piano. Now I don't want to aim the mic at the bridge, even though that's like the, the nexus of energy, because that portion of the soundboard is made stiff by the bridge. But once you get a little bit out from the bridge, that's where the board has the freedom to vibrate and generate the sounds that we want to capture. With the treble mic, I'm aiming to pick up this portion of the soundboard. We might call that the melody area. With the bass mic, I aim for the area of the soundboard that's just off the baritone area of the bridge. Obviously, you'd want to play around with this on your own piano, but this is what I find works for my piano. So you've probably noticed that these mics are at an angle. Why is that? To illustrate why, I'm going to show you a concept that I find to be very helpful, and that is thinking about microphones as flashlights. So remembering that the goal with our bass mic was to capture this portion of the soundboard, it might be tempting to just point a mic straight down in the center of that area. But thinking about this light as an analogy for what the mic is picking up, notice what happens when I go from straight down to diagonal. Straight down, you see that the area is smaller, plus the drop-off is very sharp. When I go diagonal, the pickup pattern flares, 
and the fall off becomes more gradual. Another benefit to angling the treble mic in particular is that it gets it away from the hammers, which could otherwise be a little bit overwhelming. Okay, so my final thoughts on the placement of these proximate mics is that you're wanting to think about the distance, the height off of the strings. I find that for my taste and for my mics and my piano, it all varies, right? Uh, that about eight inches is the sweet spot. So let's talk about room mics and the options that we have for stereo pairs. I've certainly tried the most common types, which I'll now list from least favorite to most favorite for this type of situation. XY, ORTF, spaced stereo pair, and mid-side miking. So today I have a mid-side configuration set up, which tends to be my preference. What I like about it is at least one of the mics is looking directly at the subject, unlike some of the other types that I just mentioned. Mid-side miking is really good at giving you that sort of in-the-room feeling. As a matter of fact, you're listening to the mid-side configuration right now as I speak. Also, it's a coincident pair, meaning that the sound hits both of the mics at the same time. And so that can prevent some phasing issues. I also like how one mic is capturing the middle of the soundstage while the other is capturing the sides, allowing me later to dial in just how much of the side signal I want in the mix. So I recommend that if you have the appropriate mics. I've also been pretty happy with the results from a spaced stereo pair. I will usually line it up to about right here, to about right here. You could vary that uh, depending on the size of your instrument. And I switch my capsules to Omni, so I recommend that if you have that capability. The issue that I sometimes have with that is that when you pan them, it sounds like the, the piano is dancing on the stage. When it hits high notes, it moves wherever you've panned that, and then it'll go to the low note side of the stage. So it sounds, can sound a little unrealistic. Also, you've probably heard the expression, mo mics, mo problems. When you start spacing a bunch of mics around in a room, they can cancel each other out with, uh, with phasing issues. Now, you may have mics that don't do figure of eight recording, which means you couldn't set up a mid-side arrangement. You might try ORTF, which I've also, again, had some nice luck with. It's, um, to my ear, more vibrant than XY. The potential issue with ORTF and XY is that you risk getting a fingerprint of your living room, say, uh, because the mics are not pointed at the instrument, rather they're pointed at the walls. So it might make it harder to uh, create the sense later on in production that you're in a recital hall. For my mid-side mics, I use MicTech C7Es, which I think are a great value for the price. Naturally, you'll want to experiment with the placement of whatever stereo pair you have for your room mics. I find it helpful to bisect the angle made by the piano and the lid and align my mid mic with that, although it might be slightly pointed down toward the soundboard. Getting some height helps. My ceilings are 14 feet tall, and I actually have my mid mic about seven feet. I think maybe there's a principle of acoustics going on there, but obviously if you have a shorter ceiling, you might still benefit from having a higher than halfway. I don't find that I get much warmth when I bring the mic down to the rim level. So now that we've discussed all these mics, let's listen to a repeated passage and I'll bring up each mic one by one so you get a better sense of what each contributes to the whole. And then I'll also alternate between just the close mics and the room mics. So that's my current method of recording the Chickering Grand at Gate City Studios. Uh, obviously this is a really rich and complex subject, so I welcome any questions or comments you might have. Uh, and of course I always appreciate the thumbs up and the subscriptions. 
I do wanna invite you to follow me on Instagram where you can get into even more piano-related hijinks with me. Uh, and lastly, I wanna thank Frederick Chopin, whose writing always gets the best out of a piano. Play us out, Freddie boy.